Hello, my name is Scott Milliken. I'm the lead developer for OpenDCIM. And today we are going to create a virtual machine running OpenDCIM 4.0, which is the latest version, uh, on Ubuntu 15.04, which is also the latest version of that. And we're going to do this from scratch, and I'm not going to uh, edit out any of the parts. I'm not going to pause the video. Uh, that way you can see just how simple it is if you follow the instructions to get this set up on a very basic um, basis. So uh, on the screen here you'll see my uh, account at DigitalOcean and I'm going to create what they call a droplet which is just kind of a pre-made image and we're going to call this one test.opendcm.org because it's going to be destroyed pretty much as soon as I finish this video. Uh, it's going to cost me one and a half cents an hour to actually do this. Uh, I'm going to just use a 1 gig, 1 CPU machine. That's all I need for the purpose of the video. If you were doing this for your site, um, I would highly recommend that you go with probably a 2 gig of RAM, 2 CPU. Um, the disk space is fine at 30 gigs. Um, 40 gigs is, is way more than you would typically need for an open DSIM installation. Um, but uh, it, it, just the responsiveness when you start getting into a lot of database queries um, with that uh, additional RAM and additional CPU would be useful for you. So we're going with uh, the New York region for where they're going to put it. It doesn't really matter because I'm just accessing it all over the internet and I'm choosing Ubuntu 15.04 64-bit uh, because that's the latest. And then I have a preloaded uh, SSH key so that I can get into the root account. So we'll go ahead and create that droplet and it'll take usually about 45 seconds to a minute to get those things done. So they're pretty quick. Um, the guide that we're going to be following is off of the OpenDSIM wiki. And uh, if you go to the main page, which we'll just go ahead and start there now, which is at wiki.opendsim.org, and you go about halfway down and right above the video that I'm going to be replacing with this video once it's completed, um, there is a link to an Ubuntu specific installation notes. Now it does say Ubuntu, and it does say Ubuntu 15.04, but it's exactly the same instructions if you're following it on Ubuntu 14.04, and it's going to be nearly identical and possibly identical if you were doing this on uh, just about any Debian flavor of Linux, um, and if you're running some other flavor of Linux, um, it'll be very, very similar. So let's take a look and see if our, ah, okay, so our um, image is ready to go. So I have a session here ready to uh, 45.55.241.251. You get to see all of my typos as well. Okay. All right. So we are now uh, logged in as root. So I don't actually want to run OpenDCM as root. I want to run it as a non-privileged user. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a user called DCIM and uh, we'll just set his password to DCIM and then the next thing I need to do is I need to add this person into the sudo group. So we're going to edit the Etsy group file and we're going to look for oops sudo and we're going to add the user DCIM to the sudo group. So I know I went by that pretty quick but this is not supposed to be a tutorial about how to run Linux or administer it. It's really about how to get um, a basic image up and going but if you kind of blindly follow what I just did you should be in good shape. Alright so you will notice from the wiki page that it says that if you're installing this operating system you should choose to add the following packages OpenSSH server and LAMP server. Well, you notice I didn't really have that option when I was creating my droplet. Uh, DigitalOcean goes ahead and installs the OpenSSH server for you, um, but they didn't give me an option to install the LAMP server, so I need to catch up so that I'm ready to go with the uh, wiki page here. So the first thing I'm going to do, actually, first thing I'm going to do is log out and log in as DSIM. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to elevate privileges. I know I was just root, but just out of habit, it's very good not to operate as root. Um, just because it is so dangerous, you can do things that will just absolutely destroy your system when you are logged in as root because it's it's so easy to, um, uh, to not pay attention to what you're doing, uh, especially if you're recording a video at the same time. So I'm going to do an apt get, which is the package installer, and I'm going to give it a command of install 
and there is a meta package called lamp server and it's a meta package you know that it's a meta package because it has a caret at the end of it that just means it's a collection of a bunch of other packages so it asks for my password and it says oh I'm gonna select all of these things if you want to be a lamp server so yes that's exactly what I want to do and it's going to ask me for a uh, root user password for MySQL. Um, doesn't have to be the same as the root password for the system, but I'm going to just go ahead and set it to DCIM. And again, I'm, I'm not as concerned about security so much on, on this one because this is a throwaway virtual machine. As soon as I finish the video, I'm going to destroy it so that I'm not paying um, by the hour for it. So while that's running, we'll take a look at the wiki and see what it says the first thing we need to do. So once you've got a basic LAMP server and an OpenSSH running, you need to add some additional packages. Those packages are PHP5-SNMP and the SNMP-MIBS-Downloader. Um, those two packages are um, basically helper packages that allow us to talk to switches, sensors, power strips, um, anything that is an SNMP-enabled um, device on your network that um, that we want to talk to and uh, you know power panels UPS's things like that uh, then we also have PHP 5- curl which is a um, package that allows us to uh, communicate with other websites and specifically this is uh, allowing us to do transactions with the API that is part of OpenDCM 4.0 itself and uh, we'll have uh, more information on the wiki about the API um, it's fairly basic at this point um, we do plan on a lot of expansion for it but instead of trying to think about everything somebody would want to do from the beginning we decided to do the basics and then let users start contributing feedback as to hey this is what we'd like to do next and then finally PHP get tech is what we use for localization that allows us to uh, support other languages okay we are done we're ready for the next step uh, so we'll just copy and paste this command because there's no point in watching me make lots of typos And this section here is where all those MIBs are downloading. MIBs stands for uh, Management Information Block. It's basically a dictionary that helps um, the system translate between uh, numeric, um, they're called OIDs or object identifiers, um, with an SNMP agent uh, into something that kind of makes sense. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and start following our instructions. First thing it says you need to do is download and unpackage OpenDCM. So I've got the first thing here is CD just because I want you to go to your home directory and then we're going to get this file. So let's go ahead and copy and paste that part. Alright and we've got the file. So now um, you can choose to install this into any directory you'd like to. I choose to install OpenDCM under var www just because it seems to make sense to me. Um, now we are not the owner, DSIM is not the owner of RWW, so we do have to elevate privileges, so I have to do a sudo um, tar and then z for, because it's zipped format, um, x to extract, p I want to preserve permissions, v verbose, I want to see all that it's doing, and then f I'm going to specify what file to untar. The tilde says go back to my home directory and you'll find this file called opendcm-4.oa.tar.gz. All right, so now we're done, um, but there's a couple other pieces to it, and there's one that I didn't put in the wiki here because it's not really required. It's more of an optional one. Um, I'd like to go ahead and just set the ownership of everything in the OpenDSIM 4.0a directory to be owned by uh, user DSIM and group DSIM. So I'm going to elevate privileges because I'm working with security here or with authentication or authorization. Uh, CH own, which is change ownership, dash capital R because I want it to be recursive. I want it to do it through the entire subdirectory tree. Um, and then the username, colon, and the group name, which happens to also be DCM. And then what my target is. And it is open DCM 4.0a directory. Okay. Now, one other thing that I've got in here. Um, 
to make it easier when you do upgrades, instead of having to untar and copy all the files on top of the existing directory, um, if you simply untar them, you'll notice that um, this went ahead and called, as I untarred the package, it, un it uh, called the directory opendsim 4.0a. So when I release version 4.1, it would automatically untar into opendsim 4.1. Um, that is on purpose. Uh, and it is so that um, when you do an upgrade, you can simply go to a new directory and uh, make a backup of your database, um, but then you can apply the update, and if there's a problem, it's very easy to roll back. So what we want to do is instead of pointing our web browser to the specific directory, open dcm 4.0a, uh, and, and having to change that every time that we update, we'll just change a what's called a symbolic link. Because every time you make a change to Apache, you have to actually restart it. Um, but uh, we're going to do this symbolic. And I have to elevate privileges because, again, I'm not the owner of this directory. Um, so we're just saying that opendcim 4.0a is actually going to have a symbolic link of dcim sent to it. And you'll see us uh, use that reference here quite a bit. Now, there are two specific directories within OpenDSIM that you need to give Apache permission to write to. Um, if you are running on Ubuntu, the group that Apache runs under is called www-data. If you're running a different flavor of Linux, it may be a different group name. So you need to find out what that is and then substitute www-data accordingly with the correct one. But there's a pictures directory, which is where you upload pictures of um, devices that go with your templates and then there's also a drawings directory which is where you would upload um, pictures of your data center floor plan so we want to make sure that Apache has got right access to those so we're going to change the group on those um, because they are already set to have group right privileges next we're ready to create our OpenDSIM database and point OpenDSIM at that database. So let me shrink this just a little bit so you can actually see the whole command on the wiki while I'm doing it. So we have to go into MySQL as the root user and you'll recall that I set the root password to DCIM when I did the installation. And here we are logged in as root so I have to do basically two commands create a database and just to keep everything simple, I'm going to call the database DCIM. You can call it anything you want to. And then I have to grant full privileges to that database, which I specify with database name dot star um, to, and then whatever the username that I want to restrict this to. And you can have more than one user that you grant access to. So you can just repeat this particular command if you have some other people you need helping you out with administering the database. Um, but we're going to use a username of DCIM, but I am going to restrict him or the DCIM account, not a him or her, um, going to restrict that account to logging in from the local host box because I don't want to expose this to uh, the world. And I'm going to give it a password identified by, and I'm going to make it super simple here, DCIM. Because again, this virtual machine won't even exist after I complete doing this video. Okay, so we've got a database created. We've got a user given access to it. That's, a, that's the minimum of what we need. So um, now we'll go on to the next step, which is to copy the distribution version of the database include file. So this is what tells OpenDCIM how to actually talk to your database. So. rwwdcim is where we've done our installation. So we need to copy db.inc.php-dist to db.inc.php. Now, since I chose the defaults, I don't have to actually go into this file, but I'm going to open it up and just kind of explain what those pieces are. Um, at the very top, we simply say what our host name is. If you had an external MySQL server that you needed to point to, this is where you'd put that uh, domain name or the fully qualified domain name, domain name or the IP address. Um, our database name is DCIM, our username is DCIM, and our password is DCIM. Again, we've gone with the very, very simple things. 
the locale is the language set that has been defined for your installation. Um, the default is English United States. Um, if you are running an alternate language uh, and one that is supported by OpenDCIM, you would have to set the locale to whatever that language code is. Now one important thing to note is that just because um, you choose a different language in OpenDCIM, and I'll show you after we get the actual installation done, um, it doesn't go ahead and translate that. You have to install the locale for the languages that you want to support. Um, down here, uh, this is a new section for anyone who had used version 3.3 uh, or prior. Um, there has never been a, a definition for the authentication that we're using. Um, Apache is still the default. Uh, it used to be the only option that we had. Starting in 4.0, you can use open authentication, which is logging in with Facebook, Google, and a whole bunch of other services. However, the configuration of that is not a simple thing. It is, it is fairly complex. Now, if you have done it before, or if you are comfortable with going out and doing your own research on how to make open authentication work, um, we have just used a standard library for, o, for OAuth, and you can take a look at the documentation that is in this subdirectory and see what keys you need to add, keys to add in, and you can authenticate with open authentication. You could either do that with your own uh, federated type of authentication or one of the other, um, like I said, Google, Facebook, etc. This is not something that we can support. We simply do not have the resources within the OpenDCIM project to support um, helping people figure out how to get this installed. Um, you, you really need to know what you're doing, like I said, in order to do it. But that option is there. All you have to do is uncomment these two lines and then make the symbolic link to whichever type of authentication you're going to do um, and get it properly configured and you are pretty much golden. So the, the application does support it in terms of if you've got open authentication working, you can use it. Okay. All right. So now let's look at configuring Apache. We're almost there. So let's go to the Etsy Apache 2 sites available directory. And in here, you'll see that there are two. The one is for um, the HTTP. Uh, port 80 sites, and then this is for the 443 SSL encrypted. Um, we don't even want to run on the port 80. We only want to run on the 443. Um, anytime that you're having somebody log in um, with a username and password, you really should be running on an SSL site. Um, so we're going to next. We're going I'm, instead of using Nano, I'm, I use VI because I'm just a masochist like that, I guess. Um, but we are going to edit this file and take a look at this section up here. This tells you that you need to change the document root to say var www.dcim or whatever directory that you decided to put it into and you need to add this section right underneath it. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to call this dcim instead of html and then because I'm using a directory that is not the default for Apache, I have to give it instructions about how to behave in that directory. So the things I'm going to do is I'm going to enable all the options and I'm going to allow um, the HT access file that we have already distributed as part of OpenDCIM um, in the API directory to actually override what all the options are. And we have to do that because we're doing a lot of rewrite rules um, and, and routing various API calls to specific uh, routines. Now, you'll notice that I have also mentioned down in this section um, about changing the name of the error log and the custom log. And you'll see those, they're just one more paragraph down. Um, if you are doing a um, an installation on a web server that also services other pages, I highly recommend that you change the name of where it sends the error and the, and the access. Um, maybe add DCIM dash 
in front of both of those files. That way it will be so much easier for you to tell um, what messages are coming up that are specific to the DCIM application. Okay, Since this is uh, a one-off, I'm not even worried about that. I'm not going to change it. Alright, now, uh, almost there. Set up access for your website. So I'm going to copy and paste this little section here. We are going to create the most basic type of authentication. for a website and that is the good old user and password stored in a file and that file is var www.dcim.htaccess make sure you've got that dot at the beginning of it okay so, gonna, so what we're doing is basic authentication and then I'm just giving it a name of OpenDCIM so that when somebody is prompted for a password they can look for the OpenDCIM and they know that they're in the right spot. Um, the file that I'm storing the username and password in is OpenDCIM is slash var slash www slash OpenDCIM.password. Now the reason I did not put it in the var www.dcim directory is you would never want to put your password file in a directory that the web server is serving out to the public. So I put it in the directory above it. That way the web server can't get to it and somebody can't craft some way to pull down that file and um, uh, download it and then they can run a, a quick password cracker against it and, and get your password. Uh, in this case I'm just using dsim and dsim for the passwords. It's not like I have anything super secret, but if you did want to um, make sure, if, if you did decide to use this method instead of um, some of the other more complicated methods like uh, connecting it into your Active Directory or LDAP server or like I said open authentication, um, then you would want to make sure that you practice as, as good of uh, security as you can even though this basic authentication isn't really uh, considered good security. Alright, so we've got that file saved. Now we have to actually add a username and password to that file and it has to be it's not encrypted, it's hashed. It's using an MD5 uh, hash um, but you have to use a, a program called HT password to manage that and so we're going to use this next command here we'll copy it over so what this is doing is um, and I have to elevate privileges again because I, I don't own this directory um, but I'm going to call HT password dash C means create a brand new file because it doesn't exist already B means I want you to go ahead and, and pull the password off of the command line and then this is the name of the file that has the passwords in it the first DCIM is the username and then the second DCIM here is the password and we got the adding password for user DCIM so we're good to go now we have to enable two modules that are not enabled by default so we do that again elevating privileges and then A2EN mod which is um, Apache 2 enable module and the first one we have to enable is SSL and even though it says you need to restart Apache every one of these commands is going to tell us that so we'll just wait until the very end to restart Apache uh, then we're going to enable the rewrite module and finally we're going to instead of enable another module we're going to enable a site and that site happens to be that default dash SSL that we had configured a minute ago and now we will finally do the sudo service apache2 restart okay so we should actually have a web server that is listening on the address that we were um, looking at so let's just go ahead and pop this up here 45 and you can see that I've been playing around with rehearsing this and such um, now I did not install a valid root or a valid SSL certificate. I just used the one that was created as part of the um, Ubuntu installation, which is a self-signed certificate. So I'm going to get a security exception saying, hey, this is not a trusted secure connection. Um, but if you're if you know what to do, then you sh then you can go ahead and add an exception. So I'm going to confirm the security exception so that I can get to the website and it's telling me that I need to log in 
with a username and password and it says it's for open DCIM so we're in the right location so what did we set our username and password to DCIM okay this is a pre-flight check and the pre-flight check was fine uh, that's why it only showed for a second uh, everything was a little green bar just and that's just a check to make sure that you've got all of the minimal requirements in order to run open DCIM on your system so we've got it installed and we are required to create at minimum three items in order to proceed first of all we have to create a department so I'm going to create a department called IT and then I'm going to create a data center and I'm going to call it my main data center and it's about 850 square feet and I'm going to use the example.png map <coughs> uh, map file that is included with the distribution just so that you have something to play with and we'll go ahead and create in the data center one cabinet AB04 and we're going to assign it to IT we'll call it a 42 Utah cabinet 8.6 kilowatts and one very important thing make sure that you actually know how much your floor can support in a six square foot or eight square foot area um, just because the cabinet is rated to hold two thousand pounds or more it doesn't mean that your floor is and I have seen many floors that have been damaged because they were not rated to hold as much weight as the cabinets were alright now that we've got the minimum three things installed we now have a new tab that says complete so we'll click on it and we'll talk a little bit about that so it tells you hey you should go take a look at the wiki well the wiki is where we're following instructions on how to install this so that's great um, it also says that if you have questions you should join our mailing list so that's here but it's also if you go to opendcm.org and click on the participation tab it will tell you at the bottom how to join the mailing list click here and it also says that we um, have a lot of users that hang out on IRC Freenode in the open DCIM channel um, now we will tell you that those are still mostly US centric in terms of what times we're there um, so if you happen to be um, over in Europe or Asia and you hop on in what we would consider to be the middle of the night or way early in the morning in the United States um, you may not get a response um, that happened uh, last night as a matter of fact someone hopped in at 530 in the morning and uh, gave up on us around six o'clock um, uh, just because they didn't uh, hear a response um, it also says go to the configuration page to see any new uh, defaults that may have been introduced but that's after you it says you should delete the install.php from the installation directory so if the install.php file exists in your installation it will always show this screen it may be on one of the different tabs but it will always show this screen so um, you'll you'll have to get rid of that before you can do anything else um, one feature that is new to version 4.0 is an online repository um, we have created um, a site and a mechanism so that if you have access to the internet you can synchronize with what we have in terms of templates and manufacturer names um, the first step is to get the manufacturer names and the whole um, process of, of getting this is first you have to synchronize those manufacturer names and then you subscribe to which manufacturers you want to receive templates for so let's go ahead and hit the sync and it only takes a second okay and we now have a full listing of the manufacturers and I'm going to show you that by um, I'm going to move the install.php to install.php-dist so that we can get past this screen um, I typically don't delete it because you never know you might need to go back into it for some reason um, especially if you're doing a conversion um, the conversion routines are always written into the install.php um, so sometimes we may ask you to uh, if you ask for support we may ask you to run it again so it's a good idea just to keep that so that you don't have to um, pull from the distribution again alright so now that we've done that we're gonna go to just the root of the website because the install.php is not there anymore and if we come into template management and go to edit manufacturers I now have about mm, 35 to 40 manufacturers that I have pulled down from the repository now you'll also notice I don't have any templates this is a brand new installation okay so no templates exist whatsoever the way that you get them from the repository is you can go in and you select a manufacturer 
and you say I want to subscribe to that repository and you update. So the next time that the administrator has set to run this uh, script as a cron job, um, it will automatically pull down any templates that are assigned to that particular manufacturer um, and add them into your database. And it's called repository underscore sync dot PHP. This is not a file for you. This is not a web page for you to pull up. So some people have said, well, I've tried to pull up repository sync and it doesn't show anything. That's correct. It does not display anything out. You can see I just ran it. Doesn't do anything. Well, it does stuff. It just doesn't do it interactively. If we go over to our device templates now, you'll see that I now have two Dell um, templates. I have a C6220 chassis, and you'll see that it downloads the pictures for you, goes ahead and adds them in. Um, it sets what the coordinates are, because this is a chassis with slots, so it sets the coordinates for us. It has the power, uh, the power supplies labeled as to what they are. Um, and then for the node, because that's where all the ports are, it even puts in what the ports are. Now, as a rule of thumb, our templates will always be what the base model has. So, um, for instance, one of the things that we do here at uh, where I work is when we're using these C6220s, it's very typical for us to install maybe a 10 gigabit card uh, into the expansion slot uh, or maybe an InfiniBand card, something like that. So, I go ahead and modify my template, but I don't want that template to get overwritten the next time that I synchronize with a repository. So there is a keep local flag that you can check and basically what it says is okay I've got the template originally now I've made my own custom modifications to it I don't ever want you to write over the top of this one particular template again. Um, if you do want to uh, get updates to it then you simply uncheck that. So um, that's the basics for how to get uh, OpenDCIM up and running. I hope uh, this has been helpful to you, and um, like I said, take a look at the uh, or joining the mailing list. Uh, that's probably the best way to report bugs or ask questions, um, and then IRC is another great way to do that. Um, and uh, I guess that's it. So there will be more videos coming out soon, and uh, have a good day.